Hello and welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be taking a look at Logit, Propit and well, other models you can use when your dependent variable is a 0, 1, dummy or binary, whatever you want to call it. So first off, let's take a look at the data set we're going to be using. And well, to do so, I'm also going to be using one of my do files as I've been doing in my other videos. So I've already been doing some setup here. And well, remember, the good thing about using do files is that you can easily replicate all your results or send it to a colleague, friend, so they can also replicate your results. In this case here, we have the LBW dataset that can be found online. So what I'm doing here, you can also do at home easily. So I'll be downloading here this dataset. So let's first take a look at what are we actually dealing with. We're dealing with a data set where the dependent variable in this case is whether or not a woman gave birth to a child that was considered low birth weight. In this case, the outcome variable low will be zero if the birth weight was, say in this case, above two and a half thousand uh, grams or two and a half kilos, or and one if it was below. It's then a function of number of different indicators we will be taking a look at, but the one we really want to be taking a look at whether the woman was smoking during pregnancy. So this is also a zero one, and this will be taking an extra close look at also to interpret different things. We're going to be using all these factors here in our model. So let's just go ahead and try it out. So minimizing here first, opening my do file again, and let's first start off with a regular regression model because yes, you can actually just do that. So we can actually just use regress, low birth weight. That's the data set. We just needed low. That was our outcome variable, as I just said. We're going to be using age, LWT variable. What else can we have there? Uh, I dot race. Remember the I dot to indicate that this is an indicator variable of race. We have smoke, of course, because that's the one we're really interested in. And then there was a number of other ones which I have on my note sheet over here. PTL, HT, and UI. This here is also known as a linear probability model. So in other words, this is just a regular OLS when you are having a dependent variable as your, well, yeah, as a dummy. In this case here, we can interpret this as percentage points. So the upside of this, it's very easy to interpret. It comes out in percentage percentages, so very straightforward. But there's a number of problems. First of all, the error term that is allocated to this model here is highly heteroscedastic and therefore, well, not fulfilling our good old Gauss Markov assumptions, right? Of course, there's an easy fix with comma robust, for instance. So we could just adapt that. However, the other and more serious issue is the boundary issue in this sense that the boundaries or the predicted probability of this model here can fall outside the zero one interval, which honestly doesn't make much sense. So this is our reference model now. So now we can go ahead and actually try one of these logic models. I should also state that there is another one prop it and well, it mostly comes down to a matter of taste which one you use. The logic model has the logistic distribution as the underlying distribution, whereas the profit model has the normal distribution as the underlying distribution. All you have to do is use the command logit, and actually we can run it exactly the same way as before. So let's try and run this model now. Let's see what we get. Well, what we have to notice is a few things here. First of all, we see some interactions here, or iterations. That's because this estimation setting is no longer ordinarily squares, but maximum likelihood. Of course, you obtain here log likelihood function, which is instrument when you want to compare nested models. Not what we're doing here, maybe another video. We have a pseudo R squared, which is sort of the same as the R squared in OLS, but not. But it comes close, but it's not really the same. There's a lot of literature on it, so go take a look. Most importantly, what are the coefficients here? Now, these are no longer probabilities, but rather log odds. And well, you can already imagine that this is actually quite hard to interpret. So you would think that, oh, if the, if the woman was smoking during pregnancy, the log odds of her having a low birth or low, yeah, low weight child at birth is 0 0.92, blah, blah, blah. But this is log odds that is rather complicated to get around. One thing we could do is transform these log odds into just odds. That would already help quite a bit. Let's, so let's go back to our file here and there's at least two ways we can do this. Maybe there's more, but these are the two ways I use. The easiest one is just to use the same model as before and add the option OR, which would transform all these coefficients that you see 
into odds ratios, which means now this is a lot easier for us to interpret. It's not as easy as percentages, I would think, but in this case, it is now odds. For instance, if we look at smoke, for instance, now we have that the odds for a woman who's smoking during pregnancy of having a baby that is considered low birth weight, that is below two and a half kilos or 2,500 grams, is about two and a half times higher than a woman that is, well, not smoking during pregnancy. So that is one thing we can do. We might also want to know what the relationship between these two models is. I'm scrolling back to our old logic model up here. And actually, you take the log odds and you just take the anti-log in this case, or the exponential. So we can also, of course, do this by hand. So I could just go take this coefficient here and simply take the exponent and start to obtain this coefficient so you can see exactly how this works. We can use the display option. EXP is the function. We add in a number and then we get the coefficient here, which you can see is, well, down to as many decimals as we can display is the same. Now, I also said there was another way of simply calling this function here as well, or this model here. So let's go and try that one out. Instead of using the comma OR here, you can actually just write logistic. This will produce exactly the same result as the model from before. Well, maybe I should learn to spell first. So logistic, there we go. And then we try it out. This here would produce exactly the same result as the model where we used comma OR at the end. We can, of course, just quickly see that it has exactly the same coefficient for smoke. Now, we can already see a lot of things here. And remember, this is just to overcome, for instance, the boundary issue that you see if you use just a linear probability model. Although you would see in a lot of papers that they still do it because the model is straightforward, easy. And when you want to take margins of this, come back to that in another video, you would also obtain, well, very similar estimates of if you just use the linear probability model. We can, of course, also add in here uh, robust standards, as I said, in order to come around the other issue. So for good measure, let's just go back and say, OK, we use a logic model. And now I'm going to add in robust standard errors, which is just comma robust or comma R, which is, well, even shorter. So we can see this here. And now we have robust standard errors. We have corrected for a boundary issue. And therefore, we have a, well, econometrically speaking, a lot nicer model than if we just use the linear probability model. And although, remember, these coefficients here are still log odds, we would have to interpret them a little differently. Although the sign and the magnitude can already tell us a lot, especially the sign whether it is positively or negatively related to our outcome variable. So with that said, let's go back here. And well, this just to give you an overview of how you can do logic models in Stata. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and well, until next time. Mm -hmm.